So the funeral, about five days ago, you said 450 people. Yeah. What did that mean to you, knowing that so many people showed up because they cared? It was great. You know, I, I first told Dabo Sweeney, I said, Coach, I know it may be a rough time for you because it's Easter and so forth. And he says, are you kidding? He said, that's the best day you could possibly have it. I said, it's great. You know, Christ, crucifixion, and everything. He, he just said, it's a great day. He read those text messages oh, that wow. he and Kevin had had uh, exchanged the last couple of years. Yeah. How did that hit you? I had never heard those, but he told me at some time he was going to let me listen to all those texts that he had texted before. But that sounds like Kevin. I mean, I, I knew he would say something like that, but uh, I had no idea that he had those, but um, it was great. When uh, he went into hospice two days before he passed, correct? Yeah. What was what was the atmosphere like with the family, knowing that time was coming, and just the, the, the thought process for you guys? Well, a few days before that, when he was biting with the pneumonia, we decided to go with Beacon, which was a part of hospice, not thinking, well, it's not like hospice as we all know it, the final thing, you know. Uh, we went with them because they were able to help us get certain things that he needed. But uh, when we had to call the hospice nurse, when he said to call her, then I knew, because he knew, he told us that morning that uh, he was gonna die today. Just like that, I'm going to die today. And uh, he, had it, he had it all planned out. Uh, he, he even told me that uh, he was excited about going to heaven, you know. And, uh, which that gave me peace. I mean, it hurt because of the loss, all of us. You know, my wife and I, and Cole, and Nolan, and Allie, it, it hurt, and Allison. But um, knowing that he wouldn't hurt anymore, you know, and he was just really gotten into bad shape, and he fought a hard fight, you know, so that, I was okay. Was that something that you guys can kind of came to peace with at a certain time in the past, knowing that this was going to be a result? We did. We knew that that was the end result because nobody had made it through ALS. You know, we tried everything that we could try, and I felt at peace with that, knowing I didn't want him to die knowing that I hadn't done, or my wife and I hadn't done everything possible to give him a chance, you know. We tried everything. I stayed on the internet every day, looking, hoping for different things, calling people all over the country, you know, but nobody had a cure. But he'd always said there was a first to everything, so he truly thought when he first got this that he would be the first. Yeah. I want to talk about that and his yeah. efforts uh, with ALS and C CTE in, in a second here. Can you describe uh, the day, the, the, the moments when you were all with him and said, today's going to be the day. What, what was that moment? Yeah, I, I didn't really want to accept that, you know. But he told my wife first, and uh, she's been so strong through all this, really stronger than me. And uh, she couldn't hardly believe it, but uh, I knew from the fact the night before, uh, he had asked us to move him up into the front room, into the big bed. He usually slept on a couch, a recliner. And he asked his wife to go up there with him. And they stayed maybe three or four hours, and he wanted to go back to the couch. And he was just really, I, I could see it going out of him. You know, I, I could see him going down even more. It's harder to see when you're there every day. You know, as you would see coming in and then coming back in a week, you know, seeing the difference. But I got to really looking at him and I could see. But uh, he was ready. Did it hit it hit you differently than you expected all this time? Yeah, it hurt like everything, you know. Uh, it still does, you know. It, it takes it'll take a while. I know they say. Time cures everything, you know, but it's just, uh, and it's not like we're the first people this ever happened to. It's not like God just come in and took him away and nobody else. I know this happens every day, you know, every minute, but uh, uh, it's, it still hurts. It's very Even important. though I was knew it was coming, you know, I just, I knew it was coming, but I didn't know like, well, it's here today, 
you know, I'm always thinking maybe a year from now, you know, another year. But uh, he lasted about six years once he was diagnosed with it, and that's a long time for ALS patient. This is a very broad question, but what do you miss the most in particular about him, his personality, oh, his character? Talking to him. You know, last year or so he couldn't talk because of the trach. And uh, I missed the, just the sound of his voice in, in talking to him. Uh, he couldn't hug your neck, you know. Uh, but he was really concerned about the kids, you know. But uh, he and I talked a lot about that, and uh, I confirmed that they, we would see about the kids and everything would be okay. He was at peace knowing that, that I was going to be there for them. Because they're, they're of the time. age now. They understand what it is. They understand what happened now. Yeah. Well, what do you still have to say, though, to, to the three of them? You know, the only thing that I could tell them is uh, Dad and I have talked about everything you guys need and want. And, and uh, he has really taken good care of you as far as trust and you don't have to worry about school, all that. He's done all that. I mean, he just had everything set up. And I said, if, if anything else goes, uh, your grandmother and I will be here for you. It's just as long as the good Lord's let us stay, and we'll help you any way we can. Just turn to us for anything you need. And I think they understand that. Kevin was very public about believing that football injuries played a huge part in yes. his ALS. Yes. What's your opinion on that? Uh, he was. Uh, at first, not. You know, he thought, no, this just something that's happened to me. But the more that he saw the guys committing suicide and, and doing really strange things, he started wondering and thinking, well, you know, and all these guys were ball players or uh, people coming back from the war with concussions, you know, and he finally come to grips with this is contributing. Uh, it's not genetic because I, I look all back, you know, through my history. Not, there's nothing there. And uh, so, yeah, I, I think it had a firm part in it. Throughout the 90s when he was playing, did it ever cross your mind when he was taking hits? Never. I, I didn't really even know. I've, I've heard of ALS. I heard of Lou Gehrig's disease, as they called it. I bet he had some kind of disease. I really didn't even know what it was, you know, at the time. It wasn't, and it's been a long time. Uh, uh, but I guess it never got the publicity or for whatever reason for people to be concerned about it, you know. Sometimes you don't think about these things until they touch home. You don't think about people having cancer or brain tumors or any of that stuff until it's your family or somebody you know very well. And then you get concerned, you know. But, uh, you know, it's stuff like cancer, they don't have a cure for it, but they have a treatment for it anyway. So they didn't even have a treatment for ALS and probably some other things too, but uh, it was a tough deal. Because he started showing signs before he was diagnosed, correct? Yes. In the late 2000s, 2008, yes. 2009? Yeah. What, what did you think about that? What did you think that was? I always thought that it was something to do with his spine because of injuries he's had. His spine was really crooked. and. Uh, out of whack from the surgery he's had during the time he was in the NFL. Neck bulges and his spine was just like this, you know. Where, and uh, so I always thought, well, maybe they've got something pinched, you know, some nerves or something. I always thought that. That's because it started in one hand, him dropping a carton of milk. Couldn't, he said, Dad, I can't hold on to that milk. And it just went from there, slowly progressed up one arm and down the other one until he got where he couldn't. The arm was just hung by his side. You know, he couldn't do anything with it. It was about this time, six years ago, 2010, yeah. When, yeah. when he got diagnosed. Did yeah. you guys know what it was? What did you expect as soon as you heard that? I didn't know. When he called me and he told his dad, I got, uh, I think I got ALS. I'm thinking, what I, I had to look it up. I didn't know what it was. And then it just floored me when I read this uncurable disease. You know, I said, no, that's not going to happen to us. We're going to find a cure. I'm going to do everything I can to find the cure for this. If somebody can do this, you know. So that kept us going. I'm thinking all the time up until the time. In fact, 
it's associated a lot with Lyme disease, and we were getting ready to run really comprehensive tests for Lyme disease. Not that that would have been it, but it was another thing we could check off. You know. If you're a person in the outside world, in my opinion, I, I think one of the things about Kevin Turner they think of is his selflessness of trying to find out why this is hurting others. He accepted what had happened to him, but he always wanted to see how he could help others in the future. He did. He did. And uh, at an early stage, he uh, donated his uh, spine, spinal fluids, and brain uh, to the Boston hospitals up there. And uh, even they even took his eyes, you know. Uh, and and he's, he thought that would be a help to someone down the road, and I, and I hope it is. Uh, there's been other people to do that, you know, a lot of people, a lot of ball players. There's ball players that actually shot themselves through the heart rather than the head so they could donate the brain. Really? Yeah. And so it's just sad that you've got to be dead to find out these things. You know, there's no other way to do it. How do you describe that to a six-year-old when he first got diagnosed, a ten-year-old? I don't know if I've ever really sat down and told him about it. He's just, well, the kids are smart and they understand what's what's going on and they knew he had a bad disease and it was but I think they really just embraced and enjoyed him the time they had him you know the same as me because mm -hmm. none of us ever know you know I, I I kept telling him I said you know I may go for you and I said if, if I get there first I'll save you a place and if you get there you save me a place you know kind of just trying to keep it upbeat and he said okay so I think they accepted it. As it got tougher, you didn't know what to expect. As it got tougher over the years, how difficult was it to have people come up to you all the time and say, how is he doing this? What are you going to say? It was hard. I mean, and I know people care, want to know, but there's no way I could say he's getting better. You know, he's, he's, he's dying. And I couldn't just say, well, he's dying. You know, I said, well, he's just kind of hanging in there. You know, that's, that was usually my answer because I, I really didn't know what to tell them. For somebody who doesn't know Kevin, yeah, how would you describe him to them? Uh, I, the best thing I could say is that they missed an opportunity uh, to meet a guy that could just love life, you know, uh, to do anything for you. Excuse me. Great family guy. Cared about his family a lot. And just, uh, I know now of things that he's done that I didn't even know about. He wasn't, he didn't do it just for the notoriety. He would stop on the street and give homeless people money. I know there's a, he'd given some people a check to buy a van with that was you know and this was times when he went through that he wasn't he wasn't a rich man he's not a rich man now you know he uh he went through drugs and and all that stuff and divorce and and uh, bankruptcy during the bad times and uh, of course the nfl stepped in and they had a plan to help him with the medicines and that sort of thing and his and his uh allotment he got during the you know during the like from medicare and that sort of stuff so he had enough to live on but he was he wasn't in a position to really give a lot but he give he still did it didn't stop him a giver how how would you describe him as someone who's now passed how he lived how did he live you mentioned giver yeah how else he just uh it was just great to be around. I mean, he was a fun guy, just a straight-up guy, you know, just a good friend to have. Uh, he was like my best friend. Uh, we'd do things together. You know, he'd take me to ball games, and he'd introduce me as his brother, <laughs> you know, a lot of times. And uh, all those times, good times that he'd given me, you know, just invite me and his mom up and just take us out to dinner and just, you know, do things, meet all his friends and just, um, 
just a good guy to be around. Had he not been my son, I still would have loved to have been around him because he was that kind of person. Obviously, you care so much about his children growing up and, and being like him, and, and, and they will be. Yeah. What, uh, let's start with Nolan. What was that like when Dabo Sweeney came to town? Oh, and it was awesome. Made that offer. It was awesome. He called us up and uh, said, I'll be there uh, tomorrow. This was like a Wednesday. He said, I'll be there tomorrow. And uh, so I wanted to offer Nolan a scholarship. I said, well, hold on a second, Dabo. I'm going to take my phone in here. And I held it up to Kevin so he could hear the little speaker. That uh, Dabo was AKT. He said, I'm, I'm coming there tomorrow. I'm going to talk to you and Raymond and Myra. And he says, uh, I want to offer Nolan a full scholarship. His, he just swelled up, you know. He couldn't really cry, you know, per se, but you could see the tears, and uh, he was so happy. Uh, and if you and I know you read the text that pretty much says it all, what because he had already talked to Dabo, but uh, he knew that Nolan made it on his own, not just because of him. He had offered a walk on, and I'm sure he would have helped him any way he could. And, and I'm sure he would have got a scholarship at some point. But uh, just the fact that he knew he was taking care of it, just like a load off of him, you know. So and he's going to go to Clemson in the middle of June. Yep. Is it different now than it maybe it would have been two years ago? Yeah. Uh, we spent so much time with him. It's, uh, you know, it's hard to just being away and I catch myself calling Cole Nolan and Kevin and you know I, I get their names I'm, I told him I'll get him a shirt with Cole on it so I can remember to call his name correctly <laughs> but uh, the kids we got great kids great kids and they love their dad and uh, good Lord willing I'll be there forever for them whether it's the opener against Auburn this year or some other game down the road. What's that moment going to be like when you see him in person? And it's a, and going to be day? awesome because I remember the first time Kevin walked out on the field at Alabama, I just had goosebumps. You know, he wasn't playing that game, but he was dressed in the crimson. I've always been a big Alabama fan, but and still an Alabama fan. But of course, now I'm a Clemson fan. Uh, you are where your heart is, and that's uh, my heart's with, with Nolan. I'm sure there's got to be an internal struggle for you in terms of wanting your grandkids to, to pursue a passion and seeing the safety aspects. Yeah. What's, what's the middle road there? How, how, do you, how do you go about that? Well, I feel a little better about it now because uh, when Nolan had a concussion the first game of his senior year, and that was kind of a shocker, but Kevin knew exactly when it happened. He, he told him, he said it was such and such, and I didn't even see it. Doctor took him out, kept him out the next game till he was re-examined and went back in. So he was all right. He always said he was okay now that he knew that they had procedures to follow, and if a guy didn't need to be in there, they keep him out. You know, if you get to that point where you don't need to play, then you need to give it up. So you're okay with it? I'm okay with it. Do you think the NFL's doing everything they can to to make this an awareable well, issue? No, not really. Uh, they, uh, I've not heard from anybody from the NFL, not a letter, anything. And I'm not saying, you know, they have a lot of guys to die. But I think this might have been a little special because he kind of initiated the whole thing against them. And, uh, you know, I saw all his high school friends and coaches, college friends and coaches, and Dabo and his staff was there. And uh, Coach Saban called me. Those stones call me, you know, all those, but I've not heard, just not even a letter from the NFL saying we regret your son's passing. And uh, I just don't know. They did approve the money, you know, for those guys, but uh, Kevin get, never got to see any of it. But, but, but that, even that's not enough, right? No. Do, no, do, they, just, do no. they seem like they even care, in your opinion? I, I think it's just to try to just slide it under the shelf. You know, just as long as these people keep it going, I mean, it could be years, you know, if they ever get, if they ever get it. But they need to be aware of that there is a problem there. I mean, and they need to address it. They're not going to because it's too big business. 
you know, but can't, they can't hurt, hurt me because I'm a little guy, you know, and I, and I really don't, I'm not saying this to really blast them, but I mean, they're not doing anything that I, makes me think that they're doing anything to help. So, and I'd say that before he passed, you know, I love football, you know, but there, there's no reason that it can't be a little safer. You know, they make new helmets and all this stuff. It's so much bigger and faster than it was when these, when these kids started playing, you know. I, I don't know what the answer is. I really don't.